Peter Schultz. He is the editor of The Winning Secret, and he is the president of Cashflow Heaven Publishing. He has been showing self-directed investors how to trade successfully since 1996, and he is a nationally known speaker on options trading and the author of Passage to Freedom, The Option Success Trading Package, The Winning Secret Trading Package, The Explosive Profits Package, and The Greatest Option Strategies on Earth. Fascinated by the idea of asset producing monthly income, Peter founded Cashflow Heaven Publishing in 1999. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you now Peter Schultz from Cashflow Heaven Publishing. Hey, thanks for the, um, for the introduction. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to get my slides up here. This presentation is how to retire in five years or less on 13000 per month tax-free. Now, um, I don't know if that sounds like something that you might be able to do or not, but what the whole purpose of the presentation is going to be is to um, kind of show you a, actually a really good plan to get there pretty much no matter where you're at right now or no matter what your financial situation. And, um, you know, these kind of multi-speaker presentations where you have a whole day of many different speakers, it's kind of cool because you get all these different ways to skin a cat. You know, you get different markets, you get Forex, you get options, you get the stock market, you get futures, you get all this cool stuff. And you get a lot of different approaches. And what Joshua said in, in the, last, the last presentation is he said, find something that works for you. And, you know, I think uh, a lot of us have the ability to find a couple of different things, at least, that work for us. And what this particular presentation is going to be is to have something kind of working for you in the background. It takes a little bit of attention, but not a lot compared to most trading strategies. And it's super, super effective. And it's a little bit deceptive how effective it is. And if you've ever traded credit spreads, there's, there's a little bit of a magic to it that's kind of incredible. And here's, I'll, I'll just kind of let the cat out of the bag early here. What the magic is, is that you tend to win most of the time. And, and, that, and you don't have to be real talented to, to do that. It's just how the whole thing sets up. It's just how the math works. So um, let's just introduce myself real quick. My name is Peter Schultz, and I'm the founder of a company called Cashflow Heaven Publishing. And pretty much everything we do is oriented towards you increasing your passive cash flow. And I was blessed when I was a young man in my first jobs to have the most horrible, horrific <laughs> bosses you could imagine. I mean, guys that would scream obscenities in your face from two inches away. <laughs> um, I think they all used to be marine drill sergeants or something. But, you know, from an early age, and, and you know, some of my jobs, I worked in the oil fields up in Alaska in the middle of December. It's dark 24 hours a day. It's so cold. It's, it was just, it was kind of like working on the dark side of the moon. And, and, you know, back then I used to just lay in my little cot at night and shiver in the cold, and I used to think, you know, is this it? I mean, is this what I'm sentenced to for the rest of my working career? I mean, I, I felt like one of those guys that got, you know, sent to Siberia and Russia or something. And, um, you know, I just, even back then as, as a 19, 20-year-old guy, you know, I was thinking there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. And I think... Looking back, I mean, some of those situations were tough, but I just think, you know, what that instilled in me is this desire to create cash flow that doesn't have anything to do with working. And I don't have anything against working, don't get me wrong, but there's a huge difference between working at something you want to do and working at something that you have to do to make ends meet. So. Now we're, myself and a bunch of my buddies and just about 75 million other folks in the country are in this baby boomer generation where we're kind of looking at some kind of a way to figure out how to retire. And I have literally spent, you know, the last 20 years or so with my publishing company figuring out the absolute best ways to do that. So let's just, let's explore that a little bit. So. First of all, you, you need a plan. You know, it's really important to have a plan so that you know where you're going and have an idea of how you're going to get there. And we need a really good plan. So if you're going to retire within the next five years on $13,000 a month in income and you don't have a lot of savings right now, I mean, you know, you might agree with me, we need a really, really good plan. Um, and it needs to be safe because there's nothing worse than, you know, getting halfway there and then just taking a giant step backwards. And, you know, and it needs to work. 
so 13,000 per month is a pretty tall order. So how do we do that? Well, if you've been in to talk to a financial advisor, and you know maybe you've done that, and that's you know that's a good first step. Those guys know a lot of things about annuities and insurance, and you know it's a great profession. But what do they say that we need? Um, well, <clears throat> thirteen thousand dollars per month times twelve need, means you need a hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars per month, and we we want that to be tax free so we want that to be net we want that 156,000 excuse me 156,000 dollars a year to be money we actually receive all of you know we need every bit of that to fuel our lifestyle because we might want to actually maybe on some days go to Starbucks as much as twice in one day so you know how expensive that could be so what does our financial advisor say that we're going to need to have this $156,000 a year lifestyle. Well, we're going to need $5,777,777 at about what, what, what uh, T-bills and 10-year uh, bonds, treasuries, are going for right now. They're going for around 2.7. You'll see this fluctuated, actually, um, uh, when the crash happened the other day. They, they went down as low as 2.45. It's been hovering up close to 3. Now, the Federal Reserve keeps talking about raising interest rates. Well, I'm a little suspicious of that, and I'll tell you why. Is the one entity in the entire world that can afford higher interest rates the least? The one that really can't afford high interest rates is, is the largest debtor, whoever owes the most money. There has never been a debtor in the history of the world that's owed more money than the United States government. You know, they really can't afford to raise interest rates. They might talk a lot about it, which the Fed has done. They might even raise interest rates a little bit. But it's not 1980 again. It's not Paul Volcker and the Federal Reserve. They can't raise interest rates to 15% or 18% to stem inflation. They don't have the ability to do that. We owe too much money. Uh, my suspicion is that interest rates are going to stay low for a long time. But at 2.7%, you're going to need a 2.7% return. You're going to need about $6 million. Um, if you're a little bit better, a little perhaps, well, not better, but more aggressive, if you want to take on a little bit more risk, if you're a little bit more aggressive and you go out there and you're going to get some of the highest paying dividend stocks out there and you really search for those, you know, a really good paying dividend stock right now pays about 5%. Now, a lot of them pay around 3%, but you can get a little more aggressive and get 5%. You're going to need a little more than $3 million. So, if you've got that amount of money laying around, I take my hat off to you. You've been very successful financially. You have my respect. I think that's wonderful. Um, but if you're not in that category, you're going to need to get a lot better returns on your money. Uh, we need to get substantially better than conventional returns, and I mean substantial. Um, so how in the heck are we going to do that? And still, you know, this is our retirement money, so this is not our risk, you know, Saturday night gambling money that you might take to a more, um, you know, highly leveraged investment. It needs to be safe, and it needs to work. So let's just talk about that money. You know, you can trade all you want with your with your gambling money, but let's just talk about what should be about 80% of your net worth, your liquid net worth, that sits back there and grows and something that you can depend on it to grow. I mean, what we're talking about here is some safety and some security in this financially unpredictable world that we live in. So in the world of investments, there's always uncertainty in every investment. So our plan has to have a high mathematical probability of success. So if you were to approach this plan would 80 to 90% probability of success sound okay to you? So when thinking about all the investing you've ever done, would that be at the high end of your probability? Now, we're basing that expectation on the Black-Scholes pricing model, which won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 1997. And here's the three mathematicians that were, received the Nobel Prize for them. One of them actually was uh, deceased by 1997. They actually came up with it in the early 70s, and it made the modern options market, the options exchange, possible in 1973. So we're using a strategy that takes advantage of the Black-Scholes pricing model. This strategy is based on selling options instead of buying them. Now, if you're an options trader already, 
you know kind of the difference between selling and buying. If you're not an options trader, I'm going to just introduce this whole new you know vehicle to you because I think it could really do you some good. So the reason it's important to sell options instead of buying them is you have a much better chance of winning. And for a retirement kind of a strategy, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for um, just all the odds, every single odd we can get stacked in your favor. So if you've ever bought an option that expired worthless, have you ever wondered where all that money goes? Okay, so I'm just going to be talking to the options traders here for a second. <laughs> so when I started out, now, and I think this might be kind of common. I might have a little bit of company here, but just, just think about it. So I got into options because of the leverage. And so I heard that, you know, instead of buying a stock for 30 or $40, you could buy an option for just $1 per share. And, you know, if that stock went up, you know, just a dollar or two, your money could double. And I got super, super excited about that. And, and all the options trading gurus I was listening to were talking about doubling and tripling your money in just a few days. And I just thought, yeah, that's for me. You know, I just want to make a zillion dollars overnight. I want my biggest problem in life to be, you know, what color my Mercedes Benz is going to be. You know, I was young. I was just going to go for it. Well, a strange thing happened between putting on that options trade and stuffing all this big pile of cash in the bank is, you know, the stock zigged a little bit, it zagged a little bit, it didn't exactly do what I thought it was going to do, and oh my gosh, my, my option expired worthless. It happens really, really fast. If you want time to go by faster than you could ever possibly imagine, just buy a short-term option, you know, and see what happens. Well, I started wondering, you know, after I lost on a whole bunch of trades when I was starting out, I started thinking, you know, where does all that money go? What is, is, you know, does my broker getting all that money? Is my broker getting rich? No, he just gets the commission. Oh, I know, it's the market makers down on the floor. Those are the guys that are making all the money. No, they just get the bid-ask spread, the difference between the bid and the ask. Okay, they're not getting it. Finally, it dawns on me. I mean, you know, maybe I'm a little slow. It's the option sellers. It's the option sellers that are getting all that money. It's estimated that just this year alone, over one trillion one hundred and sixteen billion dollars worth of options will be traded. They get more and more popular every year. I mean, they're just a, a, an incredible vehicle if you know how to trade them. So it's also estimated that over eighty-five percent of those options will expire worthless. So that comes to approximately nine hundred and forty-nine billion dollars worth of expiring premium, an almost unimaginable amount of money. So ask yourself, how much? Of that $949 billion of expiring options, do you need to retire? And I suspect it's a pretty thin slice percentage-wise. That is a heck of a lot of money. So for the purpose of this webinar, we're targeting $13,000 per month. But as you'll soon see, that amount can be just the beginning. So, you know, if, it's, if you, what you need to retire is 5000 a month, this is going to be a whole lot easier for you. If you have, you know, if you have some pretty big plans, you want 20000 a month? I think that's possible. And the strategy that we're going to use is called selling credit spreads. Now, if you're familiar with this strategy, do not dismiss it at this point. There's some incredible things that we can do, and I can show you some amazing ways to trade credit spreads that you've never heard of before that really bring in a lot of money for a short period of time. If you've never heard of credit spreads, if you're not very familiar with options, man, just stick with me. It's just, this is so incredibly cool. So what is a credit spread? A credit spread is simply selling an option and then buying another option to hedge. So the option we're selling is more valuable than the one we're buying, so it creates a credit in our account. And a credit is money that you can use to buy stuff. You know, it hits your account immediately. The really interesting kind of different thing about this style of trading is the minute you put on the trade, instantly, the minute you click that mouse, the money or the profit hits your account. So the question is, is you know, what's going to happen during the time period until expiration? You know, are you going to make money or you're going to lose money or whatever? But you get your profit immediately. And I think that's, or not your profit, you, you get a credit immediately that hits your account. So sometimes words are kind of confusing, so pictures work a lot better. So let's just take a look at what we're talking about. So this is a trade that we did, you know, a few months about, uh, ago, and here's kind of how it works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little red pen so I can highlight some things here. So 
here's the situation for all you technical traders out here. So this is Chipotle Mexican Grill, and you know they're not doing so good. You know this this uh, the stock sells off here, and then some good news comes out. Earnings come out, and the stock just shoots through the roof. So if you know about anything about gap theory, when when a stock gaps up this much, that is very positive. Uh, you usually have some retracement. You wait for a bottom to be put in, and then here it is heading back up again. So we're sitting there going, you know, uh, we have a little bit of horizontal support right here. Um, the stock is looking very bullish. It's heading back up. You know, it had a chance to, to go down and, and completely retrace the gap. It didn't. Uh, it's looking pretty positive. It's looking pretty bullish. So we're going to do a trade here, that, and we want, you know, this is our retirement money, so we want this really, really to be high probability. So we go down here below horizontal support, and we sell the 515 put. So we sell the 515 put, and we bring in a dollar 55 per share into our account. So you know, if you do a thousand of these, you know, you're getting 1,550 bucks hits your account immediately. Thousand shares, ten contracts. So we want some protection here, just in case, because what we're doing is, is when we sell a put right here at 515, we're obligating to buy the stock at 515 if the stock goes below that at expiration. And you know, we really don't want that liability. That's a lot of money, you know, $515 a share uh, times perhaps 1,000 shares. We don't want to do that. So we want to put a little something in here to hedge our bet, to protect ourselves. So we buy the 510 put, and it, that put costs us $1.05. Now, the only amount that we can lose here, let's just say Chipotle Mexican Grill, right after all this fantastic news, you know, some terrible thing happens, and the stock just absolutely plummets through both of these strikes. Well, the only amount that we can lose is this $5 right here. That's the only amount we're liable is $5 per share, but we already got 50 cents. So really the only amount, and they, nobody can ever take this 50 cents away from you once you've got it. Once you get that credit, that is yours, that is yours to keep, no matter how this trade goes. And I think that's kind of cool. So you take this 50 cents that we got in credit, that's the difference between these two, what we sold and what we bought. You take that 50 cents and you divide by your amount at risk, which is $4.50, and you get an 11% return and you get an 11% return for about, in this case, two weeks of time. So, you know, that's a pretty amazing return for two weeks of time. So that's a credit spread. That's essentially it in a nutshell. And if, if you're new to this and you don't understand it right off the bat, don't worry. I mean, I've got, you know, tons of educational material. I go over this in a lot of different ways, and I show you these different scenarios and these different things we can do. But it's it's so kind of fun the way that this works because we have so many chances of winning. I mean, here's a good example right here. There's five things and only five things a stock can do. A stock can go up radically. It can just take off to the moon. A stock can go up a little bit. A stock can go sideways. A stock can go down a little bit. Or a stock can just go down a lot. It can plunge through the floor. Out of these five scenarios, all these five different scenarios, there's only one that we can lose on, and that is if the stock plunges through the floor. If anything else happens, we win. And that's why you have such high odds of winning using this strategy. So there's another thing that we can do, which is pretty cool, is we can go, okay, you know, it's made its big move, Chipotle has. It's, it's done all of this, this uh, big volatility. And now, you know, yeah, it's kind of bullish, but it's kind of trading sideways. So we go, well, we put this on, and the broker makes you hold aside, you know, this $4.50, this margin in your account, and ties up that money until the end of the trade to make sure you've got, you know, the money set aside in case a worst case scenario happens. So we've set aside that margin this $5 minus our 50 cents. We've set aside that margin and we go, you know, the stock's just kind of waffling sideways. It's not really, you know, it's going up and down. It's, it's, it's doing its thing, but we don't see just a huge breakout happening in any direction. So what we're going to do 
to sort of goose our returns, this is really cool, is you can go up here and sell a call. So in this case, we sell the 570 call right here. We take in 95 cents. This is the trade we actually did. And then we bought the 575 call to hedge right up here, and we take in 40 cents. So that brings in a dollar fifty-five. So a let's just see what this turns into. So a dollar fifty-five credit. Here, let's just go back. Or excuse me, we add fifty-five cents to fifty cents, and we have a dollar five in credit. In fact, it's right up here. So do you see where we got that? We got a fifty-five cent credit up here on our call spread. We got a 50 cent credit down here on our put spread. That gives us a dollar five credit. And now our margin, you, you subtract this dollar five from five dollars, and our margin is three dollars and 95 cents. Now the reason it's not five dollars times two is because your broker knows that the stock can't simultaneously close above your call spread and below your put spread at expiration. So they only make you set aside one $5 margin hold. So we got a $1.05 in credit. You subtract that from $5, and it's a $3.95 margin hold. So $1.05 subtracted by $3.95 is a 26.5% profit for eight trading days of time. So you have no risk on the weekends because the market's closed. So that's 26.5% for just eight trading days. And you know that's a substantial return, particularly when your chances of winning are 85 to 90% or better. So it's one thing to create these spreads, but how do we know our chances of winning are 85 to 90% or better? Is that just because I say so? Is it because you know I just drew some lines here? Here's what the stock actually ended up doing. Here's Here's, here's the graph. You know, it closed in between our two spreads. We kept the whole amount of money. Frankly, that's usually what happens. You know, that's, that's what happens with these trades, typically. So how do we know our chances of winning are 85 to 90% or better? Well, one of the neat things about options is they're based on a mathematical formula, the Black-Scholes pricing model. So whenever we sell an option, we can instantly see what the odds are that it will expire worthless. Now, don't worry about all this complicated math that you see here. You know, what I tell people about the Black-Scholes pricing model is, um, you know, you don't have to know the internal workings of the combustion engine to the, of the internal combustion engine to drive your car to the bank. You know, you don't have to know about all the little gears and valves and everything going up and down to put the gas pedal down and steer that thing and make a big deposit. And that's exactly the same as our situation here. We're going to take advantage of this options pricing model and we're going to put it in our favor. And here's a really easy way to do this. So this is my favorite broker. Uh, it's an options broker. They're called Thinkorswim. Um, really fantastic platform. I think if you go out there and you start Googling uh, for option strategies on YouTube and you see what platform the traders are using, just about everybody uses this platform. There's some really good reasons for that. So one of them is that you can really set up your, your screen here to show you the information that you need. So there's, there's a spot here if you have Thinkorswim, if you're going to open an account, it says Layout. And out right here in this box, there's this little drop-down corner right here, this little gold and yellow uh, corner, and you click on that, and it gives you all these different choices for what to label your columns up here at the top. And what I've chosen is Implied Volatility, Probability of Being Out of the Money, and Delta. So this probability of being out of the money is what we're looking at right now. So if this thing closes, if the strike price that we sold is out of the money at expiration, we keep all the money. You know, we keep all the profit, and that is a very successful trade. So as you can see right here, we sold the 515 uh, put, and we bought the 510 put to hedge. So it's our sold put that gives us the liability. And so what is the probability of that expiring worthless? 92.18%. You can see this little red thing over here. That's our position. That's what we sold. So that's on the put side, 92.18%. Let's go over on the call side. So this is the position we sold. We sold the 570 call. You can see this, 570 call. 
And what's our probability of being out of the money? 89.93%. So that's right around 90%. So if you average these two, we have about a 91% chance of winning on this trade. Now, I ask you, if you could make anywhere from 15 to 25 to 27% per trade for a short period of time, for about two weeks of time, and you had about a 90% chance of winning on every trade, how many of those trades would you do and how often would you do it? Um, you know, probably quite a bit, probably quite a bit because the odds are and the numbers are and the math says that you're going to win on about 9 out of 10 trades. And even if things are a little crazy out there and it's a crazy market sometimes, you still end up winning on easily 8 out of 10 trades. And the ones that don't go our way, I can show you some really cool ways to adjust those. So these probabilities really do play out over the long run, which makes for great odds, plus there are adjustments we can make to make our trades better when they go against us. And I like that having options. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I welcome the occasional trade that needs to be adjusted because it says two things. We're selling close enough to the underlying to have to adjust once in a while. And by the way, selling close means bringing in more money, so that's really cool. And we have the means to adjust our way out of almost any situation, and that, makes, and that makes you feel pretty powerful and confident in what you're doing. So let me just you know, elaborate a little bit on this adjustment thing. So um, you know, with a stock, say you know, just something really simple. You, know, you buy Apple at X amount of dollars, and Apple goes down in price. You know, there's not much you can do about that. You thought it was going to go up, which is why you bought the stock, but it didn't go up. It went down. You know, it's a crazy market. Things go up and down, and sometimes even our best guesses go wrong. So, you know, you're just kind of out. You know, so you've got a couple of choices. Either you can sell out, you can stop out of the trade and limit your losses, or um, you can just hang in there, and hopefully, you know, it'll come back up again. So as a stock trader, those are pretty much your two choices. Well, you know, this, this strategy is good for a bunch of reasons. For one thing, you can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. The odds are totally in your favor. But what happens when things go against us, you know, as they inevitably will? I mean, do we just lose a bunch of money on those two trades or one trade that doesn't work out out of 10? Well, here's just one simple adjustment. And I've got a whole bunch, but, but I'm going to just show you a simple one right now. Adjusting your spreads means to close a spread that is being threatened and then open a new spread to bring in more money. All it takes is a few mouse clicks and it's very effective. So here's another actually real life example. This, and this is my commentary from my subscription service. This is the actual commentary. The stock is hovering around 169. So we sell the 174, 175 call spread. That's up here. This is the call spread. Um, and the 163, 162 spread, expecting them to expire worthless. So here we are, we're right in the center. This looks like a really good, now this is called a condor when you have a, an upper spread and a lower spread going on at the same time, or an iron condor. But sometimes the market is full of surprises and it falls right after we sell our spread. So here's what we do. This right here, as you can see, the stock is plunging and it looks like it's gonna keep right on going. It's really moving down now. And so this is the spread right here. This put spread is the one that's causing us our anxiety. That's, that's the one that we don't want to lose too much money on. So what we do is we close it. And to close it, you simply buy back what you sold and sell what you bought. And that closes the spread. And that immediately re removes all liability for that particular spread. You don't have it anymore. The only problem is, is it costs us money to, to, to close that spread. And we're in the business of making money, not losing money. So what the heck do we do? Here we've lost a little money by having to close this spread. So we go on up here and we sell a new call spread up here. And we sell a new put spread right here. Can you see that these two green spread brackets are just bracketing the stock of where it's right at now? It gives us another chance to be right. And in this particular case, we took in enough money by selling the same expiration. You can also roll further out to another expiration if you want to. But we were able to sell the same expiration. We took in more money with these two green spreads than it took us to sell this black spread that was threatened. 
and we actually come out with a profit on the trade. So we had another chance to be right. And this is only on the one or two trades that don't expire worthless. So even on a trade that goes against you, you know, you've got something that you can do. You, you can actually repair the trade. It's, it's really, really cool and still come out a winner. So being able to adjust our positions and having the probabilities on our side is critical for the success of our plan. You know, keep in mind our long-term plan. We just can't be losing money here. We need to be making money. So along with good chart rating and looking forward at the fundamentals driving the market. So fundamentals would be like an earnings report is coming up and we don't want to sell a spread right before earnings because, you know, you, you've been around and you've seen how stocks can go crazy after earnings one way or the other and they're very hard to predict. So we're going to do all that to put the odds in our favor, but we want more than theory. We want a proven plan, a proven plan to follow. So has anybody else actually done this with good success? Well, you know, we have a course. I mean, we do really, really well. We publish our track record publicly. You can go and take a look at it on the site, the Cash Flow Heaven site. This, this strategy is called the winning secret for obvious reasons. And you can take a look at our track record. So that's one thing. But has anyone else? Is, in other words, is this method duplicatable? And here's an email I got from one of our subscribers, Bob Malota. And here Bob sent me a picture of himself. And he's retired as a lot of our, um, a lot of the people that do this strategy is. And they just, people love it because it keeps them sharp, keeps them in the game, and it really seriously supplements their income. And so that's just a really fun thing to do. Um, and so here's his email. He says, as promised, here are my trading results for the year. I very nearly had an undefeated season in my high probability credit spread trading this year. Unfortunately, I suffered my first loss for the year one week ago. So my record uh, so far this year is 13 put ratio spreads, all done for a credit, eight iron condors, two of which consisted of three credit spreads because I closed the winning aside and reopened it closer to the money, rolled in for additional income, five single credit spreads, one of which was the above mentioned loss. That amounts to 25 wins and one loss. That's a 96% win ratio. Good for you, Bob. I made a total of $19,126 and averaged $1,594 per month and averaged a return of 9.5% per month, including all commissions and losses. You know, that's just a real world example of a guy that's out there. And it's so interesting. I think it's so fascinating. I mean, I'm kind of in a neat business here because I get to talk to you know, all of our subscribers and people all over the country and all over the world that are doing this. And I find that the people that do it are smart people. And they're smart because they understand the odds. Um, I think once you get a little experience trading, you know, you're not so concerned about how much money you, you could possibly make. You're more concerned about your probability of winning. And the reason folks, you know, the engineers and the, the retired chemists and the, um, you know, the accountants and, and the, the math teachers and the people that, that are doing this that love it so much is because they have a very, very high probability of winning. And they don't have to worry so much about their money. What they're really excited about is how much their money can build to, especially when you start compounding it. So here's another one. After trying uh, trading directional puts and calls with mixed luck, my cousin Ralph started trading this strategy. And this is actually my cousin, so it's my wife's cousin. It's by marriage, but he's, he's a really, really cool guy. He's older than I am. He's got a great wife, uh, lives out in Chicago. So he had such good results, this is all he does now. And when he first started trading, his wife was skeptical, so he asked her. Now, if, you, if you, for all you guys out there, have any of your wives ever been a little skeptical of your money-making plans? Um, so his wife was skeptical, you know, she raised an eyebrow, and he asked her, how about if I put an extra thousand dollars in your purse every month? So now Ralph makes several thousand dollars per month trading this strategy, and his wife isn't skeptical anymore. In fact, she kind of likes him to be doing this strategy. Um, so those are regular guys making a good monthly income, and I've got a bunch more of them, and I'd love you to inter meet all of our subscribers. In fact, we're just putting together a forum so everybody can meet each other and talk to each other. And I'm really excited about that because I like the, the more experienced folks being able to teach the less experienced folks. I think it's pretty cool to have a community, as they say nowadays. I think that's neat. Um, so anyway, you know, those are, you know, regular guys. But there's a woman out there named Karen 
that really took this method to a new level. And she started trading with $100,000 of her own money. She would saved up $100,000. She's an accountant for a big corporation. She was going to start a bagel shop. And her girlfriend talked her into taking an options seminar. This is back around 2000. And she experimented with a lot of different strategies. She finally found this one. And she goes, oh my goodness, this is the one for me. So she took 100000 of her own money using this strategy. And she even used the Thinker platform, uh, Thinkorswim platform to do it. So that's that options trading platform I showed you. So she was so successful, wealthy individuals and institutions started giving her money to manage. One of the biggest kicks I got out of her story is that she had a money manager like at Merrill Lynch or whatever that was advising her and telling her what to do and everything and you should get in this and get in that. She started doing this strategy. He took a look at her results and her account because he had access to her account and he said, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give the guy credit, you know, he had to eat some crow, but he took his hat, put it in his hand, and he said, Karen, will you manage my money for me? And she started having a lot of different people do that. She eventually was managing $95 million, and over the course of three years, she made $41 million using this strategy, and she's still trading today. So here's the thing about these kind of stories. You know, um, you, you might be thinking, oh, well, that sounds like a fantastic story. I'd like a little proof. So I'd like to give you a little proof. There's a YouTube video that has nothing to do with me. I didn't post it. I just stumbled across it. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this woman is using the same strategy that we are, that I am. This is so unbelievably cool. And look what she's been able to do with it. So there's a YouTube video where Karen is interviewed by Tom Sosnoff, and Tom Sosnoff is a super cool guy. He's the guy on the left here with the beret. You just love him. Tom's a kick in the pants. And he was one of the founders of Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim sold out to TD Ameritrade a few years ago, and Tom started another business called Tasty Trade. And it's on the Internet. I totally recommend that you go check out Tom's show. It's really fun. It's really educational. It's really cool. And to find that video, just Google Karen Super Trader Tasty Trade. So write that down. So there's two videos out there. The first video is 24 minutes and talks about her making 41 million. And the second video is 51 minutes and talks about how she made 105 million over a longer period of time. And they're both pretty inspirational. Now, I just want to put a caveat in there about these two videos and about the strategy. She started out doing credit spreads, exactly what we're learning here, exactly what we're doing. And then after a while, she got enough money and she got enough special dispensation at the broker that she was able to take off the hedge. So she can sell the, the option, but she doesn't buy another option to cover it. That's called selling naked and I do not recommend it. Uh, Karen now has five professional traders working for her every day watching those trades. If anything happens, they cover the trade instantly. I mean, that's not what we want. And when you sell naked, you not only take on a lot of risk, but you, your margin requirements go through the roof. So we are selling um, credit spreads where we're covered. We buy that hedge, and that's how, that's how Karen started out. But it's still the same basic theory, and that is, is selling something that has a very low chance of getting touched by the underlying line, and it just expires worthless, and you keep all the money. So this $41 million that she made and this $105 million that she made, it's the exact same idea that we're teaching you, is sell options that expire worthless. So Karen talks about selling about 56 days of time for optimal returns, but that was before they made the changes in 2012 to weekly options. We can now sell less time and get bigger returns than Karen's been getting. So I'll tell you what. So here's an options decay curve and here or a time decay curve. And essentially what we're selling is time. And what we want to do, the object of our game is to sell something that's worth a lot of money and have it decay down to, you know, on expiration day, which is right here, zero days right here, uh, where it's worth nothing. And then our money is freed up and we can go on and do another trade. But in the meantime, we got to keep all of that credit. So here's what you, I want you to notice about this time decay curve. It's not uh, an even line. Uh, you know, out here at four months, time decay is kind of in a flat line. It starts to steepen up at three months. gets a lot more steep at about two months out. And in the last month of an option's life, the time decay is very steep. It goes by very fast. So what Karen used to do is sell about 56 days of time right here 
And I think it was because she wanted to go from the second month out to the front month and get into that real steep time decay. Well, here's the cool thing. In the spring of 2012, they made some changes to how options expire. And they started making weeklies where you could pick your expiration date. So like now on the SPX, you've got you know four different Fridays per month, sometimes five expiration dates. So you can really get on the exact perfect part of the time decay curve. We come out here at about two and a half weeks, right in this range right here, and we are on this super steep part of the time decay curve, and that's really cool because uh, the time decay is really in our favor, and it also turns our money a lot faster. So where Karen was having to turn her money maybe once every two months, we're, we're turning our money now about once every two weeks. So the point that I'm trying to make here is things have gotten even better than when Karen made all of these millions of dollars. And she's still at it today. She's got a ministry. She you know, helps villages in Africa. She's a fantastic person. She's obviously pretty sharp. But we can do the exact same thing, uh, except even better. Uh, we can turn our money twice as fast. So we're taking what Karen has done as the inspiration for a new program designed to get anyone who follows it retired within five years. So these trades will be more conservative than our usual spread trades because we're willing to accept lower returns for a higher probability of winning. So every week I offer two spread trades. I offer an aggressive spread trade and I offer this really conservative um, retirement trade. So our typical spreads yield anywhere from 15 to 30 percent every two weeks. But what if we went for much more safety and targeted just 10 to 20 percent every two weeks? Over the past three months, we've actually been averaging closer to 20% on our retirement trades. You know, sometimes even closer to 25%. By the way, this isn't per month. This is every two weeks or so, two and a half weeks. But we have to factor in occasional losses, commissions, and the fact that we set aside money for buybacks and rollouts. But we're also averaging two weeks per trade instead of one month. So what can you expect? So. Here's the thing, if, if you've done credit spreads and you know a little bit about them, you know how well they work and you know your probabilities of winning are super, super high and they actually play out in the real world. But if you've never done this, if we're targeting 20 to 25% every two weeks, what do you think you can expect to actually make once you have the occasional loss and once in a while, even though this totally stacks the deck in your favor, of course you can have a loss. It's the stock market. I mean, you know, it's, it's just really random, crazy things happen out there. And you have to figure that you're going to get the occasional loss. We also have to set aside money um, to buy back our spreads and roll them out. So you, you have to have cash set aside to do that. So you know what can, we, what can we expect after all that? Can we expect maybe a 15% return every two weeks? Um, you know, maybe, that, maybe you think that's too high. You know, maybe, maybe 10%. Well, what I want to do right now is get our expectations so low so that even, even if you're listening and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I have never been, been able to make money on anything. I come to all these webinars, you know, it all sounds great, I try their strategy, I make a little bit, I lose a little bit, and before you know it, I'm back to square one again. You know, I just don't have much luck. So let's just take, you know, let's throw this 20% out the window, let's throw the 15% out the window, let's just say you can't even get 10%. But let's say that you can get 5% per month. That's all you can do. And keep in mind, we're turning our money about every two weeks, but all you can do, you know, you just have it really rough. Uh, you have a hard time. You're the guy that can't make money at anything, and all you could ever do is get 5% per month. You know what? That's still pretty impressive, especially when that money's compounded. If we're going to really build up that account, we want to have as much of our money working for us as possible. In other words, we want to compound our returns in a tax-free environment to get all of our money working all the time. And I told you we're going to make tax-free profits. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to take that money out tax-free when it's time to live off of it in retirement? Yeah, it'd be super cool. So let's just explore this for a second. Of course it would. We're going to put our money in a special account that can build to infinity without having to pay any tax on the profits ever. And I'll tell you something, if you're not complaining about taxes right now, if you're not bitterly opposed to paying more taxes, all I can say is you haven't made very much money in your lifetime. Because if you start making some serious money, you will be shocked at how much you have to pay in taxes, not just federal, but state, the county level, in some cases like New York City, the city level, I mean, it's tough. 
So let's put our money into a special trading account where we don't have to pay any taxes. Would that be incredible or what? And that specialist account is called a Roth IRA. This is something Congress did for us. It's just absolutely incredible. I can't believe they did it. And here's the, here's the characteristics. Contributions to a Roth are not tax deductible, but you know what? The money that you're putting in your trading account right now isn't tax deductible. It's all after after tax money. You know, the only money that we get to keep is, is the money that's after taxes. So you just take that account and instead of calling it your regular brokerage account, you tell your broker you want this to be a Roth account. It's as easy as that. I mean, if you're not doing this, I mean, this is the best, this is the coolest thing that ever came along, especially if you're thinking about making some pretty serious money. So you can contribute up to 5,500 per year if you're under the age of 50, and 6,500 if you're over the age of 50. If you're a spouse, she can contribute the same amount. You know, if you're both over 50, you can put up to $13,000 a year in this thing. So direct contributions to a Roth IRA may be withdrawn tax-free at any time. That's so cool. You can take your money out with no penalty. Earnings may be withdrawn tax-free and penalty-free after the age of 59 and a half. And that's a lot younger than I used to think it was. 59 and a half is not that old, especially now with everybody living to be 90 years old. So going on here, distributions from a Roth IRA do not increase adjusted gross income, so these earnings do not increase your tax bracket on your other income. Think about that. You could be making $13,000 a month tax-free, and it doesn't increase any of your other income. So the Roth IRA does not require distributions based on age. So all other tax-deferred retirement plans require withdrawals by 70 and a half, so you can keep it in there forever if you want to. And unlike distributions from a regular IRA, qualified Roth distributions do not affect the calculation of taxable Social Security benefits. In other words, you can still get your Social Security no problem. Uh, assets in a Roth IRA can be passed on to heirs. Now, there are some limitations. Yeah, for a single filer, um, you can't make more than 110,000 to be qualified for a full contribution. 110 to 125 for a, a partial, and for joint filer, filers, if you happen to be married, um, you can make up to 173,000 and 173 to 183 for a partial. So, but the good news is, if you're really making a lot of money, you may may not need this benefit. But I'll tell you, for the vast majority of us, this is the coolest thing that ever came along. And I've talked to Thinkorswim, and you can absolutely, absolutely do this strategy in a Roth IRA in uh, the Thinkorswim brokerage. So the amazing thing about a Roth is that you can build up any amount of wealth in the account you want. could be millions of dollars like Karen did. And as long as the distributions are taken after the age of 59 and a half, the money you take is completely tax-free. So if we're averaging just a 5% monthly return and we're only using the money we can put in a Roth, what kind of account can we build up in five years? Well, you contribute 6,500 per year into a Roth IRA for five years at a 5% per month compounded return, and this is what your returns look like. Now keep in mind, this is 5% per month, and we're getting about 20% every two weeks. So I'm being as conservative as I possibly can here. And at year five, with just the minimum con or the maximum contribution to a Roth, which is not a huge amount of money, you've got over a quarter million dollars in your account, and you're getting just under thirteen thousand per month. Um, now, take Peter, a I, long, I hate to interrupt hard you. Look at this graph. This is. Uh, we're we're yeah. we've run out of time for this session. Uh, could you please wrap up? Here we go on to the next speaker. Oh, I thought didn't I have an hour? I uh, know you only have forty-five minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, your session oh, ends at you 11.30. Know I didn't know that. Uh, you know what? I wish I would have known that, um, but I'll just get right down to the end of it. If you are interested, I've got an incredible package. I'm including this, and I will just get to the URL. It's the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. I've got a complete education package. You get the subscription. Uh, the subscription is 97 bucks a month. You're, it's not going to bother you because you're going to make a lot more money than that. I've got a, a package that I've sold for $2,500 uh, you know, on stage, and I'm going to give you an incredible deal towards that. So just write this down, the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. Um, William, if you could just include the link um, so that people can click on that. And I just absolutely apologize to the other speaker. I never go over. It's really unprofessional. So yeah, my apologies. I thought I had an hour. So thank you, William. I really appreciate you having me on board, and I appreciate folks listening. Um, <laughs> this is an incredible strategy. I hope you join me. It's so cool. 
All right, thanks a lot. Take care and um, have a good one.